Back in the 70s, there was a little Melbourne boy with a fascination for very big cats. He was all alone in hospital with just three plastic toys for company, a lion, a tiger and a leopard. From that moment, Luke Hunter was hooked. Today, he's Dr Luke Hunter, one of the world's most acclaimed big cat biologists. And his great love is the most elusive, the most mysterious of them all. He's studying the secret life of leopards. Michael Usher joined him on safari to be part of the biggest ever research project of its kind, trying to figure out how these magnificent creatures can coexist with the greatest predator of all, us. For big cat biologist Luke Hunter and I, bashing through the South African bush late in the afternoon, smell. See it? Yeah, I can smell that. Is about to pay off in a big way. You got a leopard just there. Yeah, just straight through there. Yeah, it's one of the Spotting a leopard in the wild is an extraordinary experience. Have a look there, Michael. That's so he's about a six, seven month old cub. You can see the big ears. Hasn't grown into him yet. And today we're even luckier because we've stumbled across not one, but two needles in the haystack. Two young male leopard cubs. So right now he's about as inquisitive of us as we are of him. Yeah, they're terrific at this age. If, you know, they've never experienced persecution. They've never been hassled by people. At this age, he's, he's not confident enough to come have a close look at us, but he's really curious. So we get these great experiences where, you know, they come out of the thick cover at this time just to have a good look at us. This encounter gets better. Day turns to night and the cubs become more adventurous, inching even closer to check us out. Yeah, have a look at him. Yeah, here he comes. Here comes our little fella. We don't see their mum. She stays out of sight, but there's no doubt we're being watched. Luke, for you, this is about as good as it gets, isn't it? This is fantastic, Michael. I mean, this is seeing leopards really in their natural state, you know, and this is, I mean, this is clearly a wild animal that, you know, he knows the, the vehicle a little bit, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a big job to sort of work to get towards seeing him. So, so this is the way leopards behave. This is seeing them in the wild state. Luke Hunter is originally from Melbourne. He now works in New York for the Panthera organisation, helping all the endangered big cats. But it's here in South Africa, among the leopards, where he's happiest. What is it about the leopard that you admire the most? They're a magnificently athletic, supremely adapted cat. You know, they really are the sort of the, the archetypal cat. So they're, they're essentially a scaled up version of your domestic cat, but you know, more muscular, more powerful, all their senses are tuned obviously to, you know, to killing for a living. In full flight, there's nothing more awesome or deadly than an attacking leopard. They are supreme killing machines. <laughs> And at rest, there's nothing cuter than a cheeky leopard cub playing with his mum. He's down in there. There she is, right here. He's so close. But even though leopards are the most prosperous of all the cats in Africa, they're under threat. They're often killed by poachers or hunters. Their natural habitat is in decline, and farmers blame them for killing their livestock. They're vulnerable? Yeah, absolutely. They're persecuted by people, they're, they're hunted intensively and I mean you know leopards in a number of places have disappeared. We know just in Africa alone they've lost at least a third of their historic range in, in pretty recent times. So a good time of the morning to see cats on the move, eh? Great time of the morning, yeah, the sun's just come up so it's still very cool because of the winter and um, it means that things like leopards and lions can still be active well into the morning. To save the leopard, Luke needs to find ways man and cat can coexist. At the spectacular Pinda Private Game Reserve in South Africa, he's in charge of the world's largest leopard study. But through your work, you've really become the voice for the leopards. You speak for them, don't you? One of their voices, I hope. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. the only one, but um, but yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's you know it's 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 really important. I mean, being the voice to say, look, you know, here's here's what it's going to take in terms of good science and good management to make sure that you know that leopards are around for you know for for the next generation and the generation beyond. They're chasing.
The Pinda Wildlife Reserve is a remarkable conservation success story. The place is teeming with all sorts of big. And actually this species of all the rhinos is, is doing relatively the best. And small animals. But 20 years ago, this was 23,000 hectares of cattle grazing farmland and not much else. It was fenced off and with the expertise of scientists like Luke Hunter, the natural wildlife was reintroduced. All the animals here, especially the big cats, are doing well. That's just amazing, isn't it? Now it's, it's an extraordinary place when, you know, a couple of years before I went there in the early 1990s, the most common large mammal was, was cow, was, were cattle. And now, of course, there's, you know, there's resident populations of lions and cheetahs and white rhinos and elephants and absolutely everything that, that historically existed there, you know, up until it was cattle farms and game farms. And that's great news, except that while most of the large animals stay within the electrified fences, the leopards don't, which means they're a headache and a target for neighbouring farmers. It's a problem and, and also threatening my livelihood in a sense. Yeah. That's where I make my living from, yeah. set, selling cattle. That's right. What a fantastic view. Uh, it's pretty, huh? Cattle farmer yeah. Bernard Koch is a big man with a big view, straight into the Pinda Reserve. Now the leopards, um, their favourite spot would be at the rock. Yeah. He's had problems with leopards for years and in the past has been ruthless. Yeah, we got rid of the leopards somehow. Shot the leopards? Yeah, we shot some and yeah, I think um, one or two were perhaps poisoned. I just told my guys to sort it out. <laughs> a leopard on the loose can be a real nuisance for a farmer. Already this year, Bernard's lost six calves and that's cost him a lot of money. But with Luke's help, this rogue leopard is identified and in this case, both men agree it should be put down. Are these your leopards? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I would say in that situation, you know, especially when Bernard's working really hard to sort of avoid the problems and not just get rid of every leopard, and there is really a problem individual, then, then you know, he's entitled to remove it. I think that's, that's the compromise that has to be made. So you're not some jackboot conservationist who says, give us back all the land, the cats and the leopards have got to roam free, farmers and villagers, you've got to get out of here, we've got to save the cat. It, it wouldn't work, it's just not realistic. You know, we accept that people and livestock are in the landscape, but we don't accept that you should just obliterate leopards from that landscape. We want to meet you somewhere in the middle and, and we believe we can help with that. Beautiful little spot, chaps. Thankfully, leopards killing livestock is an isolated problem. And back at Pinder, Luke can concentrate on the more rewarding part of his job, counting and tracking as many of the cats as he can. His research aims to find out what they're up to and where they're doing it. How many exposures have you got there, T? Um, it's full now. Leopards are secretive animals, and so pictures from camera traps provide valuable information. What's your station like for leopards? Do you get them much? The, uh, there's a big male that comes through here quite often, and then the little female that we, we've been trying to catch. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it is. It's good. We've got lots of fraps. They're great photos. Yeah, look, they're, um, they're not going to win any awards, Michael, but they're fantastic for us. They let well, us they do tell the... you so much. They tell us so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's good. It seems everyone at Pinder wants to be a star. But after sorting through the happy snaps, Luke finds what he's after. A female leopard whose near-adult cub needs to be caught and fitted with a radio collar. So typically we get two years of life out of them, which is, which is pretty good and I think sort of justifies going to the effort of catching an animal and putting the collar on because we, we get really great data from mm. that. It's all very well capturing them on film, but it takes plenty of patience and cunning to capture a leopard in the wild. To nab the young female, Luke's researchers, Guy and Tristan, set up a maggot-riddled but leopard-enticing snare. And while it might look a bit sinister, I can tell you this trap is as gentle on the animal as it can be. So just ease your left hand in there. So you can't see it, it's completely buried. That's right. Very concealed. So stick it in here. Yep, just slowly. Yep. And okay. it'll go off. Okay. Whoa! There we go. Jeez. There it goes. 60 minutes reporter, safely <laughs> snagged. <laughs> Trapped. Leopards are nocturnal and it's late at night when a radio beacon alerts Guy and Tristan the snare has been set off. 
they quickly dart the animal. Got it? You ready? No, I've got it. No, I've got it. I've got time. And let the anaesthetic do its job. The dose is low, so Luke and his team don't have time to muck about. You can see you're still moving around a fair bit. But being this close is amazing. She's got a full belly too. She's had a good feed. She's had a good feed today. She's a great leader. This is the 63rd leopard to be caught and collared in the Pinder study. So there you go. Wee, look at the size of them. And so these are, these are adult teeth now. Yep. At 14 months old and close to full size, the cub will soon be leaving the protection of her mother. If you've ever come out of this attic, that's, that's what the poor cat must be feeling right now. So, you know, it's a bit, bit confused and miserable. And... So her new tracking device will give Luke and the team information about how she survives on her own and what human threats she might face. Are you still finding new things out about them or do you get bored out there in the field? I'd never get bored with it, I think. It's, it's amazing just when you think, OK, I pretty much know what the leopard's going to do this time. I pretty much know what's going to go on in this population. They'll do something different. You hear that? Yeah, she's this direction here. We picked her up. Yep. Yeah, that's not bad. That's fairly close. A day after the darting, Luke checks in on Leopard 63, and we manage a quick glimpse as she walks through the bush. This is a good result. Yeah, isn't that terrific? So you can see now she's got absolutely no effects from the, from the capture operation and she's completely ignoring that collar. That's working well? Yeah, it's working fine. We wouldn't have been able to find her without it, of course, crashing through all that bush as we had to do. And that's the beauty of this stuff, is now we're going to be able to monitor her no matter where she goes. Luke Hunter says of all the big cats, leopards receive the least attention. <laughs> but he hopes his work will help change that and help save them. He wants everyone to be able to have encounters in the wild like this with these beautiful cats. Your passion seems to keep on growing. I'm really lucky that way. I think it's just, I still just really dig big cats. You know, I just love them. It's just, they're just a great thing to spend time with. You dig big cats. I do, I absolutely do. <laughs> they're, a good, they're a great critter. Will you follow the leopards until the day you die? Day I die, absolutely, yeah. I hope it's not at the hands of a leopard because um, that might be, you know, a bit rough on the folks, but, um, but absolutely, yeah, I hope, I hope I'd, I'd drop in the bush one day. It'd be more than a bit rough on the folks. <laughs> well, yeah, look, I've told them that if it happens, you know, that, that leave a leopard alone, it would have been my fault, not the leopard's. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.